All right, buckle up everybody because we are diving headfirst into a true cinematic landmark today, Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Yeah. This film is, well, it's explosive. And I've been so ready to dig into this stack of sources with you. Couldn't agree more. A real powder keg of a film. That's one way to put it. <laughs> and, you know, we've got a good mix to unpack here. We've got our trusty Wikipedia giving us the lowdown, a double dose of Roger Ebert's thoughts, because one just isn't enough for a film this layered. Never enough Ebert. Right. And to top it off, we've got this seriously thought-provoking essay analyzing, like, the whole power dynamic, the oppression. It's going to get real. The essay really adds a whole other dimension. Okay, so before we get too deep, let's just set the scene for our listeners. Yeah. yeah. We're talking 1989, a scorching summer day in Brooklyn. We're right there in the heart of it all. Bedford Stuyvesant. Picture those brownstones practically baking in that summer heat. Fire hydrants turned into everyone's personal shower. And you can practically feel that thick summer air. Oh, absolutely. And of course, no picture of this film is complete without it. Sal's famous pizzeria, holding it down as the neighborhood hub. Speaking of which, and this just blew my mind when I read it, they actually built the entire pizzeria, like, from scratch for the movie. Yeah, that's classic Spike Lee, though, that dedication to detail. Unreal. Wikipedia says he transformed the whole block just to nail that authentic, lived-in vibe. And it shows. You just feel like you're right there on the block with them. And I think what gets me is how Lee uses the setting itself to, like, crank up the tension, you know? Yes. It's not just a background, it's another character, this pressure cooker that mirrors the racial tension bubbling under the surface. Oh, for sure. Like that heat wave, man. It's yes. inescapable, right? Yeah. It gets to you. But Lee, he doesn't just tell us, hey, it's hot. He makes us feel it. Mm. It's those close-ups on sweating faces, the steam shimmering off the pavement, even the way the characters move. Yeah, it's like that heavy, almost sluggish feeling in the air, you know? Totally. And then, of course, you've got those characters. Yeah. Huge personalities. Every single one. Dear Mayor, wise, but with the past. Mother, sister, holding court from her stoop, keeping an eye on everything. Those two are like institutions, right? <laughs> Pillars of the community. Absolutely. It's almost like Lee uses this caricature style to bring them to life. You know what I mean? Like he takes certain traits, pushes them a bit, plays with stereotypes, and bam. Suddenly you understand the whole intricate web of relationships in this neighborhood. And come on, we can't forget. Radio Rahim. Mm -hmm. Walking around with that boombox, blasting public enemy. Man, that's not just music, it's a statement. Oh, absolutely. It's like an extension of himself, you know, that boombox. His yeah. voice, his power amplified. Right. Tragically, it's all tied up with his fate, too. Yeah. Heavy stuff. But uh, for now, let's stick with, like, the lead up to it all. Because mm -hmm. the day goes on in the film, the tension just keeps getting ratcheted up. And before you know it, we're in the middle of a heated debate. Literally. Sal, our pizza man with the famous pizzeria, remember him? Mm -hmm. He's got that wall of fame, right? All Italian-American icons. Which, in and of itself, not necessarily a problem, but... Exactly. But bugging out, he sees it as this, like, symbol, right? This and glaring reminder of who's not up there in a predominantly black neighborhood. And he calls Sal out on it. Oh, yeah. He does not let it slide. Demands some black faces up on that wall. And, well, things really heat up from there. And it's deeper than just the pictures themselves, don't you think? Oh, for sure. It's about representation, ownership. Hmm. Who gets to control the narrative in this community? A hundred percent. And this is where Do the Right Thing throws us for a loop. You know, it forces you to really examine your own sense of right and wrong. Because when Mookie finally snaps, hurls that trash can through Sal's window and sparks the whole riot. Is he in the right? I mean, even Roger Ebert in that Criterion Collection essay, he wrestled with it. Which is wild because Ebert, he was never one to shy away from a tough question. Never. And he really breaks down the complexity of Mookie's choice, right? Mm -hmm. Argues it's a direct response to the injustice of it all. Radio Rahim's death at the hands of the police, years of pent up frustration, rage, it all just explodes. What'd you make of that take? It's a tough one, really tough because yeah, it's destructive, right? No way around that. But then, like Ebert brings up, are we putting more value on property than on a human life? Man, it makes you think. It makes yeah. you ask yourself, like, what are we willing to accept? And what will it take for our voices to be heard? Big questions. Yeah. And Lee doesn't let up on us either. I mean, that ending, those stark black and white images of Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., each with their own approach to fighting injustice. Chills. Every single time. Lee doesn't want to give us easy answers, does he? He wants us to wrestle with it all. What is the right thing in the face of such deeply rooted injustice? And the crazy thing is, this whole right and wrong debate, it spilled right off the screen. 
when Do the Right Thing hit theaters, man, it was like lighting a match over a powder keg. Oh, people were fired up. Some critics even said, like, flat out, this is going to cause riots. Can you imagine blaming a film? It's wild, right? Yeah. But that's how powerful Lee's vision was. He tapped into something raw, visceral, and risky to put something that provocative out there. But that was the point, right? Lee wasn't afraid of making people uncomfortable. He wanted to spark a conversation, force us to confront the realities of racism and prejudice head on. Instead of just brushing it all under the rug. Exactly. And the thing is, all these years later, it's just as relevant, isn't it? Sadly, yeah. Every time I see another headline, another instance of police brutality, another life lost for no good reason, it's like we're right back there on that sweltering Brooklyn street. It's a cycle we can't seem to break. And Lee's film, it's not just some artifact from the past. It's holding up a mirror to the present. It's saying, look, these issues of power, oppression, our responsibility to do the right thing, they haven't gone away. It's a heavy realization, but it's real. It is. So as we start to wrap up our deep dive into do the right thing, yeah. I want to bring it back to you, the listener. We've walked these streets, felt the heat, grappled with these impossible choices. What's sticking with you? What are you taking away from this film and this conversation? Because let's be honest, do the right thing. It doesn't let you off easy. No, it doesn't. It sticks with you. And that's the mark of a powerful film, right? It keeps those questions rattling around in your head long after the credits roll. Exactly. And it yeah. makes you think, what would I do? Right. And with that in mind, here's a final thought to sit with. Remember that burning question we keep coming back to. What is the right thing? Put yourself in Mookie's shoes. You're standing there, that trash can in your hand, the weight of all that injustice bearing down. What do you do and why? Let's keep that conversation going. Thanks for diving deep with us today. 